Okay. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so we have been looking at uh, unsupervised learning so far in this course, <clears throat> and we'll continue to look at unsupervised learning a little bit more. Um, and just to recap, uh, where we are in unsupervised learning, we looked at um, uh, representation learning uh, via the means of uh, the PCA algorithm uh, and also the kernel version of it, which we called as the kernel PCA. Um, and then we also looked at clustering uh, methods after that, which gave us the Lloyd's algorithm or the k-means algorithm. And then um, last time we looked at uh, <coughs> estimation as a probabilistic way of doing uh, unsupervised learning. And in estimation, we looked at the um, maximum likelihood uh, based ideas. And we also looked at uh, way to incorporate prior beliefs into our uh, estimate estimator which is using the method of uh, Bayesian modeling where you start with a prior and then you convert it into a posterior. Um, so what we want to do today is continue our uh, discussion about um, estimation in general um, and in estimation uh, we want to look at a slightly more uh, realistic uh, type of data which we would like to model in an unsupervised way, right. So uh, today the goal is to look at a slightly uh, complicated data and, and we look at estimation for this. So what is this uh, slightly complicated data that I am talking about? Again, uh, what we will do is uh, for uh, illustrative purposes, we look at uh, one dimensional data and try to understand the ideas. But whatever I am going to talk today uh, will carry forward for higher, higher dimensions. In fact, whatever we discussed for estimation in maximum likelihood, Bayesian, everything works for high dimensional data also. But it is easiest to explain using uh, one dimensional data. Okay, so what is the data that uh, we are talking about here? Okay, so let us say we are on the real line, simple one dimensional data and we have a bunch of data points, um, let us say like this. Um, and uh, the way uh, the numbers are, uh, the way these data points are ordered are like, let us say this is x1, this is x2, maybe x3 here, x4. Um, I am just uh, arbitrarily labeling these x8, x9. Let us say this is the data that um, we have. Now, um, in the world of estimation, uh, the goal is you know you have to come up with a model that explains this data. So, the way we are thinking about this is um, we will come up with a generative story that explains our data. So, the question that we will first ask is you know what could be a good generative story for this data. Right. So, for this data, you see this data and then you ask the question, what could be a good generative data, a generative story? Um, first thing is this data is not just zeros and ones, so we cannot use like a Bernoulli type of a modeling for here, for this. This data has a bunch of real numbers. So, one immediate uh, thing that you could do is you can try, uh, you know, measuring or, or, you know, modeling this using a Gaussian distribution, like how we did last time, right. So, because we have a bunch of real numbers, we can always use a Gaussian distribution to model it, right. So, I mean, we could model it, right. So, it is good or bad as we will talk about it, but then there is nothing stopping us from modeling it. Um, and then you can apply your estimation methods and so on. So, let us say if we did that. So, and then let us say we did a principle of maximum likelihood to get the best Gaussian, uh, which has the mean, uh, which is best in the sense that uh, it explains the data in the best possible way in terms of maximizing the likelihood, uh, that we know that the mean of the maximum likelihood for Gaussian um, estimation is uh, just the sample mean, which means in this case, the sample mean may be somewhere here, right. So, this is, a, this may be our mu hat ml right so the sample uh, mean is the is this the maximum likelihood estimator if you assume a gaussian model um, so now if if i want to generate new data from this model that i have learned uh, which has sample mean mu hat ml let's say the variance is known in this case and the variance is some one um, now how would the density of the distribution look like with this particular sample mean that we have learned well that's going to look something like this right 
this is the gaussian of course it uh, the mean and the mode of the gaussian match it is going to be at the sample mean because we are positing that um, the actual gaussian that generated this data has to have a mean mu hat ml right so that's what we are estimating and so if you look at the density it's going to look like this now the question is well um, well what is this so this is the pdf of uh, gaussian with mean mu hat ml and variance some sigma square right uh, now the question is the more important question is well um, is this a good model for this data now the problem with this model is yes so the mean is the sample mean and uh, which is somewhere in the middle of the data points all that is fine but then if you stare at this model for a while you understand that um, there are these data points which have occurred in our data but which has very less which comes from very less dense regions right so if i if i try to find the probability of data coming in this region on the real line and in this region on the real line um, now according to our hypothesis the best gaussian also has very less probability in these regions however we have seen data points in this region right so now what is the problem uh, the problem is we have made an assumption that the model is Gaussian and then maximum likelihood assumes that that is the gospel truth and then it's going to try to find the best mean which explains the data under the model that we have assumed right so but if the model that we have assumed is not powerful enough to you know generate data of the form that we actually see then maximum likelihood cannot do anything better right so because it is searching in the space of Gaussians and then finding the best Gaussian so clearly you know we have seen a lot of data in these two regions but then our explanation by via gaussian is not very satisfactory because these are low density regions for the gaussian so then um, so then how can we uh, what what do we want well we want something like this right so we don't want a gaussian uh, to to explain this data um, but we want you know what kind of a pdf do we want right so if you if you think about this i mean this is a good place to pause and think how do you think the shape of the pdf should be uh, that explains this kind of a data well what do you want we want you know three different modes or three places where the density should peak right so there are some data points here there are some data points here and there are some here so your pdf itself should have three you know modes so which means you need something like this perhaps right You need a density like this so let me write that down so we want a density like above <coughs> to explain this data why then a density like this <coughs> has the property that it is it your data that you are actually seeing are coming from high density regions right so perhaps this is a better model for this data but then this is not a gaussian clearly this is not a gaussian we know gaussians are uh, unimodal there is only one peak for a gaussian but then this needs three peaks so which means we need to come up with a different type of model to explain this type of data right so and as you can see there is some kind of clustering behavior in the data set right so that's what we'll eventually get to right so and then we want to somehow de develop a probabilistic model which can do this which can model this kind of clustered data points so how can we do this well each of these high dense region looks like a gaussian in itself um, but then overall it's not a single gaussian right so basically what we then want is a new model um, and uh, what we want is a new generative model to explain this data or a generative story and uh, the, the name of this new model that we are going to come up is called as a mixture of Gaussians. It's not a single Gaussian, it's a mixture of Gaussians. In this case, it's a mixture of three Gaussians in the, in the, ex in the example that we just saw. So what's the story, right? So now uh, what, what is the underlying story that generates this data? Whenever I say story, it means that what is the probabilistic mechanism that generates this data right so i see the data i need to understand i need to put down a mechanism that generates the data so far in the estimation things that we have seen 
The story is simple. You either sample from a Gaussian or you toss a coin. It was super simple. Now, such simple stories are not enough to explain this slightly complicated data. So, we need to come up with a new story. And this story that we will develop now um, <clears throat> has two steps. As opposed to just tossing a coin, which is a single step which will generate our data, now we have a two step story. Right? So, what is step one of this story? Well, we will look at both the steps carefully. Step one is the following. Right, so pick uh, which mixture a data point comes from. So the way we are going to model is, so I have seen the data, I want to understand how each point is generated. I look at the first point and now I want to explain how was this point generated, x1, how was this generated. Well, before generating x1, something has happened in a probabilistic scenario, right? So, and that's what we are trying to explain now. And that something has two steps to it. And the first step is, well, um, the mixture was first picked, right? So, somehow we first decided, well, which of these mixtures, there are three mixtures in the example that we showed. And let's for now assume that we know the number of mixtures. So, I give you a number of mixtures and then you decide first somehow which mixture the data comes from, which mixture, which you can think of it as mixture or if you want to think of it as cluster, that's also fine. But which the common parlance is mixture, so I'm going to stick to that. So which mixture the data comes from, right? So once you have decided the mixture, then what do you do? Uh, then it's uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? So then the second point is once you have, you know which mixture it comes from, well, you generate data from that mixture. Generate data point from that mixture. So this is a two-step process as opposed to the single step that we have seen so far. First decide the mixture and then generate the data point from that mixture, so super simple. Uh, now, of course, we need to make this more probabilistic, right? So uh, the way that I have just put down step one and step two, there is no probabilities involved, but because it's a probabilistic model whose parameters we are trying to estimate, we need to make it more precise and let's, let's just do that, right? So, uh, let's make this precise. So, step one in a more precise way is going to look like this, right? Um, when I say we are, we are figuring out which mixture this point comes from, well, the way it's going to happen is imagine that uh, if you want to generate from uh, a data point from, from three mixtures, then assume that the model has a dice which has three faces and now I'm going to throw this dice. Right? So, I am going to roll this die and then the die falls on one of the face. Right? So, on that face we will have a number either 1, 2 or 3. Now, we are going to think of this number as the mixture from which this data point is being generated. Let me formalize that. So, we are going to say we are going to generate a mixture component among, um, well in the example it was 3 but general it can be k mixture. So, let us let's make it slightly more general. Um, among 1 to k, there are k mixtures um, and I am going to call this mixture component as z i, right. So, this is a number that we have to first decide between 1 to k which indicates which mixture the ith data point comes from, that value z i. Now, how, I, how am I deciding z i? I am deciding it in a probabilistic sense by, by rolling a dice, right. So, if the die rolls and falls on the phase 2, then it means that z i equals 2. The i th data point goes to the second mixture, comes from the second mixture, right. So, uh, what does that mean? That means that, well, there is a probability distribution, which is the die that I am formalizing it as probability distribution. The probability that z i equals, um, let us let's say use some other thing. So, let us say l um, equals some pi l, right. Uh, it just means that the probability that the ith data point comes from the lth mixture is given by some pi l, right. So, if there are only three mixtures, uh, then let us say pi 1 is 0.5, pi 2 is 0.25, pi 3 is 0.25, then it means that 50 percent of the time I am going to get a point from first mixture, 25 percent from second mixture and 25 percent from third mixture, right. So, we are assuming that this is uh, this is step one of what is happening uh, under the hoods, right? So, so of course, uh, pi is a probability. So, which means that sum over i equals one to k pi i will be one because they have to sum up to probabilities. I need to choose one of the mixtures in a probabilistic way, 
um, and also we know that 0 less than pi i less than or equal to 1. Again, these are probabilities for all i. All I am saying is that, well, uh, you are selecting one mixture in a probabilistic fashion where the probabilities are given by pi 1 to pi capital K and which phase the ith data points die falls on, we are going to call that z i, right. So, um, if you remember from k means, we also use z i as a cluster indicator for the ith data point. Here, it is the mixture indicator, if you will. Okay, so this is first step. So, now we have decided which cluster or which mixture the data has to come from. Uh, now, the second point, uh, second thing, is, second step is pretty simple, right. So, let us say z i was some 5, which means that I need to generate from uh, data from the fifth mixture. Now, for each mixture, we have a Gaussian with its own mean and variance. That is the assumption, right. So, every mixture has its own mean and variance. And now, if I roll the die, it falls an, on phase 5, then it is as if I am going into the fifth box, fifth door, which tells me uh, there is a mean and variance sitting inside the fifth door and then I will pick a random data point according to the, that particular Gaussian. Um, to, to formalize this, we will just say generate x i, the ith data point as a Gaussian or a normal which I am using n to uh, denote uh, with what is the mean now? Well, the mean is the mean corresponding to mu z i, right. So, z i is the cluster indicator which door I am going in to pick a point now, right. So, there is a mix, each mixture has a door and then let us say I go into the fifth door, then it means that z i was 5, that is why I went to the fifth door and then I am sampling a point according to the mean and sigma squared z i according to that particular mixture, okay. So, so this is the uh, this is the generative model. It has two steps, and uh, uh, this is how one data point is generated. To generate a single data point, you go through these two steps. First, roll a die, look at which mixture, and then go to that mixture, sample a Gaussian from that Gaussian uh, data point according to the mean and variance of that mixture. Now, to generate the second point, you again assume the same story, right? So, you again roll the die. It might fall on a different phase. You go to that corresponding mixture and then sample, and keep doing this n different times. You get a data set. Right. So, um, if you if you have to put this um, in the in pictorial form like how we have been seeing so far, uh, it will look something like this. Right. So, you have the first a box which has pi sitting in it. Uh, you press this button, what you are going to get is well one of the values which is 1 to k uh, with different probabilities determined by pi. Uh, so, once you decide which box, uh, then you go to that particular box and then each of these 1 to k has a corresponding box which has mu 1 sigma squared 1, mu 2 sigma squared 2 dot 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 mu k sigma squared k. Now, uh, and then uh, according to each of this, I mean depending on this, let us say mu z i was 2, I went to the second box. I get x i from that and so on, right. Um, so, that is in general. So, this let it be general, um, okay. So, now, um, this is a slightly different model from what we have seen so far because it has two steps, which means, um, of course, we have the data x 1 to x n, which we are observing, which are real numbers and these are the observed quantities. But then in the model that we have put down, there are some unobserved quantities also that determines x1 to xn. And these in this particular case, what are the unobserved quantities? Well, the unobserved quantities are z1 to zn. The mixture indicator or the cluster indicator are unobserved. So, these are unobserved or latent. <coughs> so, these are what are called as latent variable models. So, our Gaussian mixture model is a latent variable model because uh, the, the final output that you are observing, you are assuming depends not only on some parameters that you want to estimate, but also on some unobserved latent variables, right. So, these are latent variable models. This is just an example. There are several latent variable models uh, that people typically use and this is one of the most commonly used ones, okay. So, now, um, 
Now, as an estimation procedure, the question is, what are the parameters that we need to estimate in this model? This is a good time to pause and think, how many parameters will determine this model completely? I will tell you that now, right? So, what are the parameters? You only see the data, now what are the parameters that you need to figure out? Well, in the Gaussian case, simple Gaussian case, it was just the mean or mean and variance. Now, we are seeing there are many more parameters, right? So, for, for I mean, the first thing is there is a pi, which is a vector of uh, probabilities, pi 1, pi 2, dot, 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 pi k. This is something that we do not know, but then it determines the output. So, this is a parameter of interest. Um, and then for each k, for each k, there is a mu k and sigma squared k. Right. So, there are two parameters. In total, you have uh, 2k mean and variance for each of the uh, mixtures that is that that is 2k parameters plus there is a common pi sitting uh, where which gives probabilities for each data points. Um, you can either think of pi as having k values, but then because pi has this condition that the sum of pi i's should be 1. Um, if you know k minus one of them, the last one comes for free, right? So because they have to sum to one, there is a there is a restriction there. So you can think of it as k minus one free parameters, if you will, right? So so in so overall, it is of order of three k parameters. I mean, if you want to be pedantic, you can say it's three k minus one. That's also fine. So we need to estimate these many parameters from data, right? So we are earlier we were just estimating one parameter the bias of the coin or the mean of the Gaussian distribution. Now, there are host of other parameters that we want to estimate. Um, now, uh, it is not obvious what are these estimators, right? So, just by looking at the data, how, how can we decide what are pi's, what are uh, uh, mu's and sigma squares, it is not at all clear, right? So, it is hard to make a educated guess as to what these things would be. Um, but our method of maximum likelihood is a very principled method that does not, you know, uh, that will give you an answer no matter what the model is going to be, right. So, as long as we have a well specified probabilistic model, we know that you can run the principle of maximum likelihood on it, right. So, let us try that, right. So, that is what we are going to do next.